Okay, as of 2002, this document, right? Surfside, you guys can look it up, you can find it. All right, the importance of this is Special Inspector. Not so much what they did, this did, did involve some major repairs to the structure, but more so part of the document says instructions for Special Inspectors and what a Special Inspector is. A Special Inspector and a threshold special inspector are each private professionals who are working for and with the consent of the building department. So when I say that the self-certifying, that's not to be confused with, with the, the 2002 definition of special inspector, meaning that even though they may be certifying it, they're representing the building department. You take note of the part of the documents. So you'd have to go back and find in time that this definition marries up still back with the building in 2000 and uh, when it was first built. The special inspector, is it the same? If so, then you now can say the engineer that's approving it is the building department's engineer. Because it makes it clear again under this definition in O2 is a threshold are private professionals who are working for and with the consent of the building officials. No matter who is paying the bills, when it comes to the inspection to be made, only the requirements of the code, the building official, and your expertise and experience should be considered. And this is what is telling the special inspector, the guidelines, etc. This is for uh, your attorneys to evaluate. This is not law advice, it's for your attorneys to evaluate and to make sure that they step back in time um, when they pull up each document to make sure the uh, special inspector definition was not amended. Um, but as of this date, this is what it looks like. And you can find this document right here under uh, the research of it. If you can't find it, or if the attorney can't find it, I could, I'll, I'll have it downloaded and I can uh, help them. I can get them this document down over to them. But you should be able to find it under the FOIA request also. But if they somehow magically lose it, well, there it is. This this pertains to uh, a repair they did with uh, this one is this one is what's this one? Um, balcony restoration and waterproofing, and this was done back in uh, well, you saw when it was done back. So that's the importance of now this document. Why I just picked on it and grabbed it is what a special inspector is. So if we do find it. The balconies participated in this failure, such as they they uh, they should have repaired these balconies. Well, how about this for your lawyers out there that need to do this for your lawyers, or if you want to turn it over to your lawyers or to the family's lawyers, they should go back and pick on this document, 2002. Why? They should have a, 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 a Florida engineer um, pick on the document and see if these repairs would have been considered right uh would they would they have been updated correctly in other words not just repair uh, usually most municipalities say that once you expose it you have to bring it up to code so it's not just a repair you're doing but if you expose something too far or too much of it too, you have to bring it to code for example you say you want to replace drywall at your house so you remove the drywall once you do that if your municipality requires an inspection, uh, they will then be looking for insulation. And while they're looking for insulation at that wall, they would then see if the, um, if the wood is in good wood, if it says wood in good condition, the spacing is about right. And that your electrical, if it's exposed in that wall section, is, uh, is up to code. Or is it red flagging, red flagged? Now... Um, when I say up the code, you might see uh, wire nuts uh, inside there, not inside a junction box. Well, that would be a red flag, and that would have to come with the code. Seeing um, um, the knob and tubing is still fair game, and so no, that would not should not red flag you to bring it up the code in most municipalities. But maybe in uh, this location that that would red flag you. The point is, once they exposed or doing work on the balconies, repairing them structurally, were they, were the, were the, was the code in 2002, would they allow like uh, the balconies to be wrapped the way they were? 
or would they say, no, we do our balconies a little different now with punch shearing protection? Did they have to deal with punch shearing protection in 2002? That is the question. And since it's a special inspector, um, you can now reach back to the municipality saying, hey, wait a minute, your inspector should have red flagged the uh, balcony repairs and should have insisted that the balconies uh, be reinforced differently now, now that they were working on the balconies, that they should have insisted that. Or maybe it was only railings they were working on, and so railings are not that in-depth. But this is for the lawyers to, to dive into, to, to, to keep searching on each one. So each one they did. So when they put the planter boxes in, if they used a special inspector, that's the municipal, municipality's inspector and also the inspector himself, the engineer themselves. Was it, would they require that the load be checked? And to what degree? Based on that year and the code books they're using and also what's on statute uh, at the time, the municipality. And there's a superseding municipality. For example, Miami-Dade, does it supersede the local municipality's uh, structural rules? So it's something to dig into with the attorneys and, uh, and the, uh, to do that, uh, to dive into to see if they should have forced, um, should it have red flagged and forced a next level of repair, not just the R&R, &R, remove and replace, but we're forced a next level of, oh, we have to now bring this to a new code compliance. That is, I think, something that is a good rabbit hole to dive down for your attorneys. And that would then triangulate back to every engineer that touched any part of the structure and also connect them to, when, if they held the statue, uh, the, uh, the title of, of a special inspector. And then now you can start going after the municipalities and also the engineers that, that acted in behalf of the municipalities. And, and I don't think that gate, I don't think that releases them. I don't think that releases them from the license and they become an employee. I think you still can go after their, uh, their license, uh, their, their, uh, their insurance. Ultimately you want your pound of flesh. You need to go after their insurance and also their, 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 their money. And would that, would that for can you go after them in that capacity? That's what I'm suggesting um, for for the answers. It's a much more deeper dive than uh, that would require. You know, I can do this a lot of the diving, but frankly, the lawyers should be doing ha hiring and as, as hiring some uh, structural engineers that are licensed in Florida to dive into this, to dive into the code on each one, each event to be able to uh, do the uh, FOIA request, to be able to subpoena the uh, deposition of anyone they can relating to these repairs. These people, a lot of these people should still be around. Um, uh, the uh, video is what we really need, some of that damn video. All right, um, yeah, I'm good with this. Oh, when do they put the videos in? How long do they keep their video records? Where do they store them? <laughs>